permanent monitoring of team structures and is presenting uh, Andrew T. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for this uh, this uh, okay, occasion to uh, discuss, even uh, being everyone at home or, or somewhere else. Um, it's clear what, can you see me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, this, this uh, presentation is inside of a larger project. It's called Money to be Safe project. And then we are, the main idea is to make the monitoring system of the of the structure. So in this case, we are talking about the structure, but of course, the uh, our um, our uh, presentation can be extended. Our work can be extended also to other to other situation. Um, we are the main uh, activity we have is to um, prepare some uh, device, like we can say homemade embedded sensors so we put in the beams or uh, somewhere else in the, in the in the shell or other kind of concrete structure main concrete structure but of course can be also extended to steel structure and for instance we have here some plates this is the concrete plate reinforced carbon fiber net reinforced and here uh, on the other side we have also masonry uh, brick uh, masonry panel uh, uh, we both we we put in the test with the uh, with some um, uh, you know typical uh, bending test or shear stress and this kind of sensor just a skin sensors and um, all these kind of sensors are controlled by small uh, uh, like uh, Arduino like uh, uh, system uh, like here we see a little box we we prepare and we test it and um, this is a a very simple example of a comparison between uh, uh, one sensor uh, controlled by our small uh, box and another sensor controlled by very expensive machine. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, more than 50 times uh, more expensive. And you can see, except the last part is related to the crash test, crash uh, moment, collapse moment. All the rest is pretty in good uh, agreement. So this is another. Uh, test related with the shear test from panel and uh, you can see here our small uh, uh, device the devices are deformation devices and um, uh, I mean um, uh, instead of to use uh, uh, accelerometers that give you just an indirect or uh, indirect uh, information about the stress we are using deformation can give some direct information about the stress so imagine for instance a shell with a double uh, curvature and n phi and theta uh, stress. Uh, we need, of course, some um, model to to, uh, to to solve this this structure problem. But uh, if we imagine to put one, in one point some kind of uh, deformation sensors like this one, we can have a sort of um, skin effect. It means membrane uh, behavior, or uh, some other inner uh, embedded sensors can give you some information about the flexural behavior. Um, now there are some kind of piezo actuators or sensors. You know, actuators can be um, controlled by electricity, but they, they can be also reverse. In this case, we are using the reverse way, so as a sensors, and then they can give you information about the deformation. We can have some information about the uh, the rotation, the curvature, the, the variation of curvature, and it means also uh, stress. Just imagine some very complicated uh, shell like this one. We are talking here about this is a Aero Sarin and wonderful uh, TWA terminal in New York from 1962. You can see this is not so easy to to con to make some calculation. Uh, this is, we are talking about uh, double curvature shell, and uh, what they are doing now are uh, using a very complicated system like. Uh, uh, Reno, uh, grasshopper, uh, other kind of, uh, uh, you know, assistant design program, and then you can have some idea. But uh, always you need to check your your design with some control. So our idea is that if you have some kind of structure, very complicated structure like uh, like this one, this is a tennis center in Hangzhou, in China, twenty eight thousand people capacity uh, this is made by grasshopper 
uh, and other uh, uh, system. Uh, they call also uh, RIMO. RIMO means a rhinoceros plus model or some other kind of uh, uh, program that control and help you to control the shape and also the structure. You, you need also to make monitoring. Monitoring is very cheap and nowadays is very simple to organize, but we need to use it because in that case you can have a sort of a very good, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, control of the structure like you have in your car. In your car you can control everything, your tires, your temperature, everything. Why we are civil engineer, we cannot control our pretty good and wonderful shape made by some crazy architect. Why not? Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Abruzzese. And uh, I, uh, I see that there is a question from uh, Amedeo again. Where is Amedeo? Yes, I, I, I'm here. Yes, Amedeo, I see you. Ciao, Amedeo. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, thank you very much for, for the nice presentation, Professor. Um, I want to ask uh, um, if it's possible to use also um, acoustic emission sensor that are piezoelectric sensor positioned on the surface of, uh, of the structure. In uh, this case, you can also localize uh, by triangulation the source, uh, the source of damage. Yes, look. Uh, this kind of um, this kind of um, uh, system are being used um, pretty much mostly on the on the suspension bridge suspension bridge on main cable and they they are help you to make this localization so on. I can never say don't use this or use that I will use use everything you can now it's very cheap it's not it's not very expensive okay acoustic emission is not so um, efficient in the in the in the sense of the you need the, you need to to make a very high frequency uh, recording system to get this information so you need to you need always to have your here there but uh, you cannot do that so it's related with the, with the number of uh, uh, of um, uh, simple um, uh, simple um, um, numbers that, that you get from your your system but uh, in that case, it's pretty useful. So, but if you put together uh, deformation sensors and also acoustic sensors and also uh, uh, dynamic sensors, it means uh, accelerometers, in all this system can give you the main idea. And then you can also make a model that in a real time, you can give the real effect of the situation. And most important, you can also record all this information in one database and even after event, after after earthquake, after the shock, after the crash, uh, after something, you can have the information about what happened before. It's like a black box. You can have always somewhere and then can give you some information. I don't know if it's clear. What is it? Yes, thank you so much for, for your answer. So thank you. I, I also have a, I want to ask you a comment about the economy of permanent monitoring. What are the costs and savings? The cost, of course, will will range in the sense you can have a, a, a very nice, a very nice fur, or you can have just like a fake fur, or just like a wood wool, or you can have a, you can have cashmere. It doesn't matter. It's important you have some sensors. Uh, in the in 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 what we are testing now, it's very very cheap in our laboratory. We are spending like a. We, I can say compared with the past 100 less than the past. It means uh, if you are going to have a very good uh, monitoring system, you can going to spend one or two percent, no more than that, of co total cost of the structure. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have also a question by Stefano Gabriele. One by one, you are <laughs> you are yes. getting you are getting interested. Of who course. is there? Thank you, thank you. I'm here. Oh, Stefano. Yeah. Thank you for uh, uh, your presentation. Gabriele. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Stefano is the first name. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No, no, it's okay. Um, uh, so I would like to ask, uh, because of for permanent monitoring, uh, okay, costs could be important, but for this, uh, in my view, much more important is uh, the precision that you can uh, request it to, to the monitoring and also uh, the the um, the rich um, the how much your sensor is uh, 
uh, affected by noise that you that you have in the surround of, uh, or in the environment. At the stage of your development, uh, uh, how is the situation about the precision uh, and the, the ratio between sensitivity and noise of, of, of the sensors? Yeah, this is a very interesting question. Um, then, and uh, I can, I can uh, come out with, uh, with one um, example. If you're if you are working with, uh, uh, with um, uh, wire, wires that are pretty protected, and now we can do that. It's not so difficult. We can, uh, we can come out, we can have uh, some very good uh, uh, information with very low, uh, very low noise. And uh, uh, the, we, we, we test in the, in the laboratory with a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, environmental noise, electronic noise, because in laboratory we have a lot of noise. I can measure with a special kind of uh, instrument, a lot of noise, but it affects more uh, electronic device like accelerometers or other kind of things. But these kind of things related with deformation, the cables uh, can protect the, the signal. And um, on the other side, there is a, the communication. The communication is very important because the communication now is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anyway is uh, wireless. Uh, this kind of uh, and that's another uh, um, kind of uh, field to uh, investigate and discover. But even in this moment, we can be pretty much um, uh, we can rely pretty much on this kind of uh, uh, architecture because uh, even without the wait for the 5G. Uh, we can have a, I can say that we are we are going to have a pretty good uh, structure. I mean, uh, architecture for the device we are going to use for the structure. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Abruzzese.